Now, for those of you who are unaware who Berla are, Berla are one of the leading companies in digital diagnostics on vehicles. They can literally tell you absolutely everything. Even down to when indicators were used, how many people were sitting in the vehicle because of the sensors in the seat, because the car's got pre-tensioners built into the seat belts. So it needs to know who is sitting in the car. So in the event of an accident, where does the pretensioner go off? It's got all this information. So the clip that I just played is from a video that Harsh did five months ago talking about Brian Koberger and how they could know where his vehicle had been on the night of the deaths of the four students. But it's stuff that we can apply in Kylie's case. So some of the examples he gave is that the computer from within the car can say when indicators were used and it can also tell you how many people were in the vehicle based not just on the seat sensors but also the pretensioners in the seat belts. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. He mentioned a company named Berla. So I jumped in, got online and had a look at what it is that this company can do. Now bear in mind that this is only one of a number of different companies who have developed software for using in vehicle forensics. And of course, in a case like Kylie's, where the car went to FBI and then to CHP, I've no doubt the FBI would have their own programs for forensic analysis of vehicles, as would CHP. And I'd imagine that they would probably be the best forensic programs that are out there. So I'm going to talk about what is shown on the Berla webpage. But bear in mind, this is quite possibly just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot that they can find out about a vehicle, but there's probably a lot more that hasn't been said. So let's first have a look so at the Berla as I mentioned, page. Berla offer a forensic service. So they're basically having a look at all the information that's in systems within vehicles so they can give a picture of what happened and who was involved. And of course, as per their web page, they can also provide location data. So there's quite a lot they can do. So the thing I found fascinating is a particular page which talks about how many the networks of integrated electronic systems that exist within a typical vehicle and the actual number in relation to those systems. So looking at your average vehicle, there are a hundred plus computer systems, 300 million lines of code and 25 gigabytes generated per hour. Of course, by computer systems, they're not talking about big, complicated computer systems, but they're talking about separate computer systems for each different area or function of the car. So things that are sensing what's going on in the vehicle the whole time. We're talking about environmental environmental factors. What's going on around the car? What's happening outside of the car? How is it communicating with other data producing? I found it quite interesting it. that it mentioned that 
the computers within a car can communicate with other vehicles and infrastructure. Think about it. Does your car have parking sensors? Then your car is interacting with the environment around it. If your car has Bluetooth, then it's going to interact with every Bluetooth system that's within its range. And if that Bluetooth system is connected to another vehicle, then it's going to connect with that. Sure, your car might scan and automatically connect to your phone because you're the driver and it knows your phone. But in the background, it's also scanning for other devices. So any passengers in your car, the car is going to scan and detect the existence of their own devices. I'm going to read the next section verbatim because I think it contains some pretty interesting and some, some crucial information that's worth knowing. So, data is stored by vehicle systems, as I mentioned, 100 plus computers, as it is collected and processed. The information contained in those repositories is critical evidence that is extremely valuable during an investigation. It then goes on to list and describe high level categories. So let's have a look at those and see what it says about them. Something to consider. Next time you jump in your car to go somewhere, have a look at the dash and the different things that light up that your car is giving you information about. So the first section that it covers is vehicle events. So it accesses event logs, which are associated with activity such as door opens, gear shifts, odometer readings, ignition cycles, speed logs, and more. So it's gonna tell you which doors were open when. That's going to include the hatch door. There's a sensor. Hop in your car and your hatch isn't properly shut, your car's going to tell you your hatch isn't properly shut. There is a sensor that tells the car when the hatch door is open and when it's closed. Same with all the other doors. Gear shifts. Logical. Odometer readings. So they can find out from the gear shifts what sort of terrain the vehicle was on for starters. If it's going low speed for quite a while and there's time between gear shifts, that's going to tell you something. Odometer readings. It's going to tell you what the different readings were at different points and ignition cycles, when the car was started and stopped, how long it was off for, how long it was on for, all those sort of important things. And of course speed logs, it's monitoring the speed the entire time. So it's going to know what speed the vehicle was travelling at at any point in time. In case that means they're going to know if the vehicle was driven into the water, if the vehicle was reversed into the water, what speed the vehicle was reversed into the water. They're going to know how long the vehicle was running for before it went into the water. So that's going to mean they're going to know if that vehicle went from a party site 300 metres away or if perhaps that vehicle had been driven around for a week or so before finally going in the water. All those bits of information can be gleaned from the computers. And this is something that I think is pretty crucial, location data. So they can recover the location data and navigation information such as track logs 
as in what roads the car's been along, saved locations, active routes, and previous destinations. So they can get into the computer and find out where that car has been, what routes it was taken, where it stopped, how long it stopped for, all those sorts of information. Which once again goes to if the vehicle did not go in the water on the night of the party, that information is going to come out. If the vehicle was driven to the water, stopped at the water for a period of time and then pushed in, that information is going to come out. Everything to do with where that vehicle was during the period of time from when Kylie went to that party to when that vehicle was finally located is available on a computer. I don't know how much of it would be affected by the water, but most of these systems, like I said, they're small systems. They're contained, they're tightly contained. So there's a good chance that a lot of this data would have been preserved. Now I already mentioned that vehicles connect with any sort of devices that can connect with them via Bluetooth or wireless network or USB ports. But what's really interesting here is that it can also identify data associated with those devices. What does that mean? That means that when the vehicle is doing its little bit of browsing and it connects up to somebody else's mobile phone, it can then take in data associated with that mobile phone. So if there were other people in Kylie's car, even if they didn't tell their devices to connect to the vehicle, the vehicle will have gone through, browsed through, and will have recognized, recognized those devices. Not only that, but it will have taken data from those devices. And at the same time, if the vehicle was turned on, then any devices in proximity will have been recognized and recorded by the vehicle. So at the time that the vehicle went in the water, for example, the computers on that vehicle, if the vehicle was running, or even if the ignition was switched on to make it possible to steer the vehicle so that the wheels didn't lock up, then it will have recognised all the devices that were present at the time that that vehicle went into the water. I think it'd be really fascinating to be able to have a look at a log from, let's say, 12.30 on the night of the party through to when the vehicle stopped recording data to find out what devices were in the proximity of that vehicle. So what is it that investigators can achieve or find out from accessing this data? They can find out what happened. Sequence of events leading up to the point when the vehicle stopped recording data. They can identify patterns which of events around the incident. So may not be of any importance or a lot of importance if Kylie's vehicle went into the water the night of the party. But at the same time, it could show that that's what happened. But if Kylie's vehicle had travelled around random places that weren't previously recorded before going into the water, that's going to tell something. 
And of course, importantly, it can determine timelines of activity and establish a chain of significant events. So access to the computer in Kylie's car could give a lot of information about what happened and when that happened, which of course would be crucial to the investigation. So then you have the answers about where. So it can tell you where a vehicle was at specific times. Like I said, you've got the navigation data, but you've also got the ignition data. So it'll tell you how long before it, between ignition events. So they can know how long a vehicle was in a, in a particular location at a particular time. It's also going to make note of new locations that the vehicle went to. And it's going to tell you where the vehicle was at specific times. Once again, totally crucial for an investigation if a vehicle ended up in the water. And there's a question over whether or not the vehicle went in the water the night that it went missing or at a later date. And of course, thanks to the magic of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, it can also tell us who was involved. So it can pick up those unique identifiers, tell you which mobile phones were in or around the car, at what times, for how long. So it would be possible to find out people who were involved or people who were witnesses. So at the time that I looked at this, which was five months ago, Bella didn't have software for the older Hondas like Kylie's, but they did have software for vehicles that were older than Kylie's, which means that they have the capacity to develop that software at a later date or if needed. But importantly, really importantly, they're not the only forensic specialists out there. And of course, like I said, they're a commercial service. In other words, they would do it for perhaps police departments that are doing investigations, private investigators, etc. But when you think about it, FBI, CHP are going to have their own in-house forensics and they're going to have the best of the best. So provided that not things weren't damaged too much by water, there is a whole story that Kylie's vehicle could tell investigators and like I said many of those units are small sealed units so hopefully the majority of those units would have survived ended up in, ending up in the water at the very least we know that the vehicle's black box as it is called so the main computer that records a lot of the data is designed to survive underwater so that at the very least would have been retrieved and all those little itty bitty computers that take information where do you think that that information goes to that goes to that black box so regardless of any of the smaller components being destroyed by water, there's still going to be so much information in that black box contained within Kylie's car. So if 
CHP are doing their job properly. If FBI are still looking at Kylie's case, they're going to have so much information from that vehicle that's going to tell a lot of crucial things that may help get justice for Kylie.